Dear students, till now we have seen that we measure the molecular weight of a protein or the peptides from this protein and arrive at the matches from the protein sequence database. But it is important to think how can we actually arrive at the sequence of the protein? It is a very interesting question because there can be multiple proteins that have the same molecular weight and therefore your job of finding out which protein is there in the sample becomes very difficult. Okay, so mass spectrometers give you the capability to measure the molecular weight of proteins and their peptides. However, as I just mentioned, this information is not enough to deterministically arrive at the protein sequence. So there are several important algorithms that exist which help you to get the sequence of the protein in question. Let's take a look at this diagram. Here in the first step, you have the entire protein mix. There may be more than one proteins in the sample and therefore you need to separate them into the individual proteins. In this case, it is shown here that the proteins have been separated and then you select one single protein for onward analysis. You have to charge this protein in order for it to move within the magnetic field. For that, you need to impart a positive or a negative charge on the protein as shown here and then inject it into the mass spectrometer, which is shown here. So once you have inserted this protein into the mass spectrometer and the fact that it is charged, it will move and it will give you MS1. The MS1 peaks are representative of the molecular weight of the protein. Moreover, you can fragment this protein into its constituent peptides by using fragmentation methods and once you measure the molecular weight of each of these peptides this is called MS2. So the peptide mass measurement will give you another spectra. The spectra are given here as an illustration and then you can go on and extract the sequence tags from this information. We're going to look at the sequence tags later in detail. But just to give you a brief introduction, sequence tags are small peptide sequences that can be obtained directly from the mass spectrometer data. Once you have these peaks from the experiment, then you can look at the protein sequence databases. You can filter these databases by looking at MS1. So if the entire protein, the intact protein, has a specific mass, then you can filter the protein database and only keep those proteins that have a similar mass. And you can of course reject the rest of the proteins. Now from those proteins that you have shortlisted, then you can fragment those proteins and obtain MS2. So here, this fragmentation is shown. This is called in silico fragmentation. And then you can compare the experimental data with the in silico data. So this comparison can tell you which protein has the most matching peptides with the experimental data. Then you can list them and find out which post-translational modifications may have been there in the sample. And in the end you can score the entire protein list and the one with the highest score or the one with the highest number of matches may just be the protein that is there in your sample. So this is the overview of the entire protein sequence search and identification process, which is shown here by a flowchart. The same steps that we just discussed are listed here. So if you have a protein sample with several proteins, then you can remove the contaminants, obtain the experimental mass list, and of course, you can compare this mass list with the protein sequence database and the proteins that are there inside it, which need to be filtered first. 
and digested to give you the theoretical mass list like that and then you can compare these two lists the experimental mass list and the theoretical mass list so this is also called in silico mass list. okay so once you compare them then you can see which peptides match the most and you can list the mash masses and score so if you score then you can obviously see which protein has the highest score and that is most probably the protein an important step at this stage is to evaluate the statistical significance of this matching process so in conclusion the two flowcharts that we just saw tell you how we can arrive at the sequence of the protein that is there in the sample by selecting the protein of choice from the protein sequence database more so you can have multiple matches and therefore you may want to have a scoring system or a ranking system to rank the proteins that are given from the protein sequence database